The Western world, with its slow internet speeds and prejudices about nerd culture, is still playing catch up to Asia in the global esports scene. In fact, they're so far behind that their players are referred to as foreigners even by other Western commentators. But despite being seen as outsiders, Europe is a thriving esports hub with its own brand of celebrity culture and diehard fans. It's Sunday afternoon, we're at the London Olympic Park. Two years ago, this was built for actual sports. And now two years later, we're here in the same stadium watching eSports. I'm not sure it's quite the athletic legacy that Boris Johnson had in mind, but it's kind of ironic that there's people in that building playing a virtual version of football. I had heard about one British gamer who had amassed a fortune through gaming and video blogging. And his success story was a long way away from the stoic work ethic of his Korean counterparts. His name was KSI. At 21, KSI had made a fortune from posting videos of himself playing FIFA in his bedroom. With over a billion views, KSI has the second most watched YouTube channel in the UK. Yo, we work inside the GWT, and today I've got something slightly different for you guys. We got a Q and A with uh, Matt. Sarah here. Matt, just Matt. Yeah, for now, okay. just Matt. Today it's just Matt, and uh, <laughs> let's get on with the Q and A. What floor are we on right now? We're the highest floor. Okay. So this is, I guess. Some people would say a penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> you can see like literally outside of the border of London yeah, from here. Yeah, you can see like the Shard, you can see uh, a few stadiums and stuff. It's yeah, the view is phenomenal. And right? you've got like a 360 view of all of London as uh, well. Essentially, yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is... Uh, Where the magic happens? Uh, not yet, not yet. Nothing's yeah. happened here. It's in the other room actually, but... Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> These are all my shoes. There's like quite a lot of gold in these shoes. <laughs> yeah, these are Versace's. What are the next big purchases you've got lined up? Getting a jacuzzi. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting a jacuzzi like right at the top. Wow. Pretty much, yeah. They'll have to get a helicopter <laughs> to pick up the jacuzzi. So you're getting a jacuzzi yeah. airlifted here? Airlifted here, yeah. So would you call yourself a pro? A pro gamer? No. God, no. God, no. No. <laughs> I'm definitely not a pro player. No, 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 no. No But way. still you've managed to kind of achieve fame with FIFA and gaming as kind of like the, the vehicle that brought you there. Yeah, definitely. How did this all start? How did it all start? Um, in my bedroom, yeah. You know, I did a few videos here and there and uh, eventually it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. More FIFA videos. So you can relax, relax. A lot of people think uh, to be at the top, you have to be the best at a certain game or this. No, you don't. Like, it's more about personality. But how have you gone to the place where you have a giant penthouse? I'm now a brand, like KSI is a brand. Like, I have several incomes now. So I have my own shop. <laughs> I have, uh, I'm in a group that also has a shop. Um, I, you know, I, I do music, I do acting, but, uh, the main income would definitely be through advertising. So, obviously through my videos and you know views I get. Last month I got like 70 million views. It's crazy that it's all just come about from me sitting <laughs> in my bedroom, just making a few FIFA videos. So how many subscribers do you have? In total, uh, maybe like nine, 10 million. <laughs> So, I mean, you're, you're getting a jacuzzi airlifted into your flat. Yeah. I gotta ask, are you a millionaire? Um, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. I guess essentially I'm a 21 year old who's <laughs> a millionaire through gaming, vlogging, just my online experience, yeah. Yo, I'll take it. <laughs> As he took me for a spin in his bright orange Lamborghini, it was clear that KSI had earned more money than I would ever see in my entire life. 
KSI was a new kind of millionaire, and one that we'll be seeing a lot more of as gaming outpaces the music and film industries. I was interested in the different ways that esports entrepreneurs could stake their claims to the massively expanding fortune available through gaming. We had been invited to meet another larger than life character, a guy called Sam Matthews. Gamer, social media guru, and self proclaimed party guy, Sam Matthews is the founding CEO of Europe's biggest hope at global gaming success, an esports team called Fnatic. The team were celebrating their 10 year anniversary on the rooftop of their East London headquarters. If you look at our Facebook fan base, we had like 200,000 fans like a year and a half ago. And now we've got 1.4 million fans on Facebook. It's crazy that it's, it's still underground. When, when, if you look at our team and you compare just our Facebook fans to those of the Premier League, you know, we, we have more fans than pretty much all of the Premier League except four teams. And it's like, who the hell's heard of Fnatic? I think that things like football, they're kind of limited in, the, in their scope. Whereas something like video gaming, it's not just one sport. It's like having a, a football team and a tennis team and a cricket team all in one. So as a, as a brand and a company, that, that's exciting because we can do interesting things with that. Esports isn't just these geeks in a room locked away. These guys are traveling around the world. They've got girls chasing them. So this is my Twitter. This is a girl saying, you perhaps lost this time, but you want something else. My heart, bae. <laughs> And I think that's what's really super exciting for me is that I can see these young kids actually becoming superstars and, and earning like more money than I've earned. And it's like, it's just insane. And actually, you know, the coolest thing is that we make a ton of products. So we have like water bottles, headphones, like caps, and they, they sell. That's where we see the big growth opportunity is, is, is kind of capitalizing on this this young, impassioned user base that, that really see this as a, as a movement, as a lifestyle choice. And it, just as much as back in the day, it might have been like skateboarding. What we do believe is that eventually it will become much, much bigger than 90% of world sports. I really believe that. As the sun set over Shoreditch, Sam Matthews took off his business hat and put on his party fedora. I like to party. I mean, I like to dance. I love music so much. I mean, I've always been into music. I used to mix drum and bass on vinyl. You know, I've been recently a lot into tech house, deep house. And, and you know, I, I said free booze, rooftop and Shoreditch, and people came, you know? And how late do you think you guys are going to go tonight? Like, I, I don't know, there's another party going on, so we might go to that. And I think the cops might come soon because it's pretty loud for a roof terrace in residential areas. You know, don't mess with the cops. That's one lesson I'll teach you guys. <laughs> because I've learned the hard way? No, I'm joking. <laughs> we can break these chains. Trailed by an entourage of beautiful women, Sam quickly took over the party, pushing the gamers to the edge of the dance floor and taking over the decks. He later ditched the barbecue to go to a series of after parties. Wherever there's money, there are people tagging along just for the party. And with all the money esports is generating, it's no wonder that the Lambos, the Penthouses, and the Groupies have been quick to follow. Sam wanted us to see his team in action, so we went to the European Championship at Gamescom in Cologne. With over 300,000 visitors, Gamescom is the highest attended gaming event in the world. So we're here at a place called Gamescom. It's basically Nerdtopia. This is absolutely massive. It's bigger than any sporting event that I've ever been to. You've got fans of all different games. It's like going to an NFL match, a basketball match, and a football match all at once. I wasn't quite sure what was going on here, but I now realize it's a contest to see who can masturbate their invisible penis faster. That guy quite smugly uh, just won that. Uh, he was very fast. I mean, I'm impressed. Kind of awkward, this girl's shark gun is a lot smaller than the other girl's shark gun. 
But what we're here to see really is the eSports people. Alliance and Fnatic are gonna play at 3 p.m. and the fans have already been there since 10 a.m. waiting for it. Fnatic and Alliance going head to head with the number one seed in the world championships on the line. Put your hands together, we're about to get into the final. As far as the majority of the crowd were concerned, Fnatic were destined to win the European Cup. But their opponents and arch rivals, Alliance, had other ideas. With some of the best players in Europe, they won the first two matches with relative ease. After losing that second game, you could really see on their faces they were emotionally and physically drained. Their brains have been clicking at like a mile a minute. One of them was almost in tears. This is their livelihood. You know, their their futures and their careers depend on winning this game. Tabs is the one that's taking the damage, but it doesn't matter. The reset comes, the lead goes in, Peke goes down. It's just reckless. The one man standing for Fnatic to prevent them going out. And Fnatic pulled it back in game three with Reckless leading the charge. But in the fourth game, Alliance defeated the crowd favorites and claimed their title as champions of Europe. Fnatic are dethroned as the champions of Europe. The new kings are Alliance. While they didn't manage to win this time, the dedication of Fnatic's fan base was immense. And even in defeat, there was a legion of supporters queuing up to take pictures with the team. I've been watching Fnatic for a long time, and it's just amazing. Like the players, they play so well. My heart's still beating to this point. I made a cheerleader costume for the Fnatic team, and I was uh, cheering them even if they lose. It is hard, of course. I really wanted that win. Fnatic lost this time, and even if they hadn't the chances of them going on to win in Asia were slim to none. But Sam Matthews had realized the bigger picture. There were about as many Fnatic t-shirts at Gamescom as there are Manchester United jerseys at Old Trafford. And that's the real ambition, a truly international sports brand. Win or lose, the European esports scene is a hugely lucrative industry. And when the real winner is the group with the biggest following, Fnatic have already won.